So welcome to our Take Your Kids to Work Day Authors at Google uh, presentation here in New York. Uh, does anyone know who R.L. Stein is? Everyone ever read? Raise your hand if you know who R.L. Stein is, who's read his books. <whistles> Pretty cool. I wish he was here today um, because he has written and sold more than 300 million copies of his books. That's a lot. Yeah, 300 million. Um, he's the most popular children's author in history, R.L. Stein. So he's written the Goosebumps series, the Fear Street series, um, and uh, also the two book thriller Dangerous Girl. So he lives here in New York. He's a local. And guess what? He is here today, Mr. R.L. Stein. So put your hands together and please help me welcome R.L. Stein. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here today. Is everyone having a scary day? No, not yet? Well, you know what? I thought maybe to start things off, maybe you and I, this is the widest audience I've ever had, <laughs> and then we'll see how this works. I thought maybe you and I could write a ghost story together. Do you think we could do it? Yeah. What do you think? Let's give it a try. Our ghost story is called The Haunted Car. And the first thing I need is the name of a boy. Who has a good boy's name for me? Good boy's name. John. John. All right. And you know, when you write a story for people, you have to tell them what your characters look like. What does John look like? Help me out here. What does John look like? Real loud. You don't know. We don't know yet. We have to figure it out. What does John look like? Very big, bulgy eyes, really? <laughs> yeah, what else about John? No, no, he doesn't have a fat mustache. He's a, he's a normal boy. Come on, you guys are starting to scare me. <laughs> it's getting very scary around here. What else about John? He's tall and lean. Good. That's good. That helps us. We can start to picture John, right? Yes. He has what? Five pet snakes. Five pet snakes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, one day, John's father comes home, and at dinner, he says, guess what? I bought a new car. Well, it isn't exactly a new car. It's kind of beat up. I don't know why the guy who sold it to me was so eager to get rid of it, but we have a new car. And John is so excited, he jumps up, he runs out to see what the new car looks like. He runs out to the street. Help me out. What does the new car look like? What does it look like? Can't hear you. It's red, but it's kind of rusted out. Yeah, that's good. Yes. It has fire prints on it. <laughs> That's good. What else about the car? Yes? It's, a, it's an SUV? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. That'll work, I think. And what else? Help me out here. What else about the car? It has a lot of dents in it. Maybe it has a broken window, but John doesn't care. He's very excited. And he says, I just want to see what it seems like, what it feels like, to sit behind the wheel. So he opens the door to get into the car, and when he does, he hears a girl's voice. Who has a good girl's name for me? Who has a good girl's name? Yes. What is it? Lily. Lily. All right, and help me out. What does Lily look like? Help me out. Yes. She has blonde hair. That's good. We can start to see Lily. What else about Lily? She's what? She's tanned. Okay, she's blonde hair. She's tanned. And in the back, yes, real loud. Yes. You have a question. What's your question? Brown eyes. Yes, okay, all right. And Lily says, John, I'm new in your neighborhood. Can I try out your new car too? And John says, sure, jump in. So Lily jumps into the back seat, 
and John gets behind the wheel and closes the door, and when he puts his hands on the steering wheel, he hears a whispered voice, Take me for a ride. Take me for a ride. John says, huh? What? Lily, did you say that? She says, say what? I didn't hear anything. And John turns back and puts his hands on the wheel, and again he hears, John, take me for a ride. And the car starts up. What should John do? Should he jump out of the car as fast as he can? Or should he put his foot down on the gas pedal? What do you think he should do? How many? Let's vote. Let's vote. How many think John should jump out as fast as he can? We wouldn't have much of a ghost story if he did that, would we? <laughs> How many think he should put his foot down on the gas pedal? Yes, John puts his foot down on the gas pedal, but he's too short. His feet don't reach the gas pedal. And the car starts up anyway, and the car starts rolling down the street, and John hears a whispered voice, faster, faster. It seems to be coming from the radio, faster. And now John is really scared. He can't stop the car, and he knows he lives on a dead-end street. And the street ends with a brick wall. He's got, to end, he's got to work fast. He doesn't know what to do. He hears faster, faster. He looks in the mirror, and he sees a hideous ghost. Help me out here. What does the ghost look like? What is, there's the ghost. <laughs> we know we're going to have sound effects. What, what does the ghost look like? Help me out. Yes. A white. He's all white. The ghost is white, but you can see through him. Some black dripping, black dripping ooze on him to make him even scarier. What else about the ghost? It's a hideous ghost. Looks like an old man. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. That's great. <laughs> what else about the ghost? It only has one eye. One eye, and one eye is drooping out, drooping out. It's a hideous ghost. And now John doesn't know what to do. He's terrified, and the car is going faster, and it's heading right to the brick wall. They hit a bump, and suddenly the glove compartment pops open. And in the glove compartment, John sees two things. He sees a rusty old knob and a book. And the book is called How to Get Rid of Ghosts. Which one should John use? Which one should John use? How many think he should use the rusty old knob? How, ma <laughs> How many think John should use the book? John takes the book. He, John opens the book. He reads the book. The book says, use the knob. <laughs> he takes the knob, he puts it on the radio, and he clicks it off. And when he does, the ghost lets out a hideous scream. What does the scream sound like? What does the scream sound like? <laughs> what does it sound like? That's pretty good. Pretty good screaming, pretty good. And the ghost disappears. John looks out and realizes he's back in front of his own house. And he turns and he says, Lily, do you believe what you... Oh, Lily is gone. Lily has vanished. Do you think she's the ghost? I don't know, I don't know. But John gets out of the car and he runs into the house and he says... Dad, Dad, you won't believe what just happened to me. And his father says, John, you ran out so fast, I didn't get a chance to show you your real surprise. And he takes John into the garage, and there in the garage is a bright, shiny new bicycle, the bike that John has been waiting for for months. And John is all excited, and he runs across the garage, and he runs up to the bike, and puts his hands on the handlebars, and he hears, take me for a ride. <laughs> That's our ghost story. Thank you very much.
Thank you for helping me. That was good. You know, if I publish that story, I have to put all your names on the cover. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I you know every, people always think of me as a scary guy because of the Goosebumps books and Fear Street and all. But I actually started out writing funny stuff. I wrote a lot of joke books for kids and funny books. And I, st I started writing when I was nine years old. When I was nine, I found an old typewriter up in the attic. Does anybody know what a typewriter is? <laughs> you see them in museums now. <laughs> I dragged it down to my room, and I just started typing out little joke magazines and little funny stories, and typing. And I was always, I'd be in my room. I was a weird kid. I was always in my room, typing. And my mother would stand outside the door, and she would say, go outside and play. What's the matter with you? Go outside and play. And I'd say, it's boring out there. Type, 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 type. And I would just stay in there typing. And I ne the thing is, I never learned how to type, because I was just this kid. And I started typing with one finger, not even two fingers, just one finger. And look at it. I've now written 300 books with this finger. <laughs> this finger wrote 300 books. Look, it's totally bent. It's ruined. That's what I gave up for my art, right? I figured the finger goes, that's the career. Anyway, I started writing all kinds of jokes. Here's a joke that I wrote. You can tell me. I, I always think this is the best joke I ever wrote. But you can tell me if it's funny or not. What do you get when you cross a dog with a frog? What do you get? You get a dog that can lick himself from across the room. <laughs> he doesn't get it. <laughs> That's pretty good for a 10-year-old. Come on. It's a pretty good joke. Anyway, you all got copies of my new book, and after the talk, I'm going to go over there and sign them for you. These are brand new Goosebumps books, the first new Goosebumps books in a long time. The new series is called Goosebumps Horrorland. And these books are a little bit different because you get two stories in every book. You get a complete goosebump story. The first one is called Revenge of the Living Dummy. The second one is called Creep from the Deep. And you get a full goosebump story with a lot of the old villains, Monster Blood and the Haunted Mask and Slappy the Evil Dummy. And then, just when you think it's safe to close the book, there's a second story, and the second story takes place in Horrorland theme park. The scariest place on earth. How many of you have been to an amusement park or a theme park like Disney World or Busch Gardens? Or yeah, a lot, right? They're fun. How would you like, do you think you would like a scary theme park? A place like Horrorland? Yeah. How many would like to go to a real scary theme park? <laughs> well, what do you think you would find there? What do you think? What do you think? I'm having fun making up this scary park. What kinds of things do you think you would find in a scary theme park? Yes. People who are half dead. Are half dead. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Right. And what else? What else do you think you would find in a scary park? Yes, real loud. People that are dead. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't sound like a very lively place. How about the rides? What kind of rides? What else would you have? A haunted house. Yeah, a haunted house would be good. And what else? Skeleton ghosts. Well, you'd have to have skeleton ghosts. And what else? A ride that went off the track, and there you were floating in the air. I have to write some of these down. <laughs> I mean, and what else? These are good. Yes. Squashed eyeballs. Squashed eyeballs. That would be in the dining hall, right? That would be in the restaurant. That's good. 
in the restaurant at Horrorland, in the restaurant at Horrorland, well, they have ice cream. They have calf's brain cookie dough. And they have something called chocolate-covered blech. <laughs> that sounds good. And we have, um, in Horrorland, in Horrorland, there's a place called Quicksand Beach. And it says, drop in anytime. <laughs> and there's a werewolf petting zoo. And there are bottomless canoe rides where you really get wet. And a thing called the doom slide where there are 10 different slides, and you get to pick which slide you want. But, and nine of them are good, but one of them, you slide forever, and you're never seen again. And you never know which one it is. So I'm having a lot of fun doing Harland. Here's a really cool thing with these new books. Here's this website, this amazing website called enterhorrorland.com. And you can actually go to Horrorland when you go to this website. You can go into Horrorland Park, and you can ride all those creepy rides and play the games, and you can look for clues as to what the mystery is going on inside these Goosebumps books. I'll tell you a story. This is, this is why I think theme parks can be really scary. This is a true story that happened to my brother and me when we were kids back in Columbus, Ohio, and this is, I never forgot this. I always thought theme parks could be really scary. I've never told this story before, so it's the first time. So I might be a little weird about it. We'll see if I can, <laughs> I can tell it. But um, I guess I was about 11 and my brother Bill was 8. And across from the Columbus Zoo, there was this little amusement park. It wasn't very big, but it had a lot of rides and games and carnival games. And one night, uh, Bill and I went with my parents. It was pretty late. The park was just about closing, and we did a lot of rides. And then way in the back of the park, there was a hall of mirrors. It was called the Haunted House of Mirrors. Has anyone ever been in a hall of mirrors? Have you ever done that? Right. Well, then you know what it's kind of like. And my parents wanted to go home because it was late. But Bill and I said, well, just let it. We'll do the Hall of Mirrors. So we went in, and it was very dimly lit. And it was like a maze. You know, you walk, there's a long row of mirrors. And it was so weird to come in in this dim yellow light. And then I could just see hundreds of me all the way down, just reflections of yourself all the way down. And it was very, it was very, it was creepy right from the beginning. And Bill and I started to walk through this hall of mirrors. And you couldn't tell what was an opening and what was a mirror. It was very hard to tell. It was hard to walk, and partly because it was so dark. And at one point, I thought I was going through an opening. And I walked right into a mirror, and I cracked my head. And I sort of bounced back. And when I turned around, Bill wasn't there. He had gone somewhere, and I called, I shouted, I said, Bill, where are you? And he said, I'm over here. I couldn't see him, and I walked a little bit. I said, no, I can't find you, where are you? I'm over here. I walked a little further, and I was trying, I almost walked into another mirror, I just, reflections of me all around, I couldn't find him. And then, <laughs> and then, the lights went out. All the lights went out, and I just stopped. I guess they, for, they closed it. It was late, and they closed it. And they forgot that Bill and I were in there. And we were in the dark. We were, I was just standing there, and I could just vaguely see all these reflections of myself all the way around in these mirrors. And it was pitch black, and I shouted. I said, Bill, where are you? Bill, no answer. Bill. Come on, Bill, say something. Where are you? There was no answer. And I thought, oh, no, I'm going to be in such trouble if I come out of here without my brother. <laughs> right? My parents will kill me if I lose him in here. And I shouted, Bill, where are you? Silence. Silence. Now I'm starting to get scared. And then suddenly, I hear this whispered voice coming from one of the mirrors. I see you. 
I see you. Hey, what was that? Bill. No answer. Bill. And I walk a little further. Now I'm trying to make my way through the hall of mirrors, and I'm like holding on to the mirrors and walking in the dark, trying to find Bill. And then I hear, I see you from another mirror. It's following me. And I'm calling for my brother. I'm shouting, but there's no answer, and I can barely see. And I'm feeling my way around. And once again, I hear, I see you. And then a hand grabbed the back of my neck, and I screamed. And I turned around, and it was my brother. It was Bill. <coughs> and I said, did you hear that whispered voice? And he said, yeah, it was me. <laughs> nice joke, right? He scared me to death. So the, I said, let's get out of here. That was a really mean joke. I said, let's get out of here. So we started feeling our way, trying to find the exit and going around this corner. We went around one corner, and we we're trying to feel our way in the dark out. And we were almost out when we were walking by this mirror, and suddenly a face popped up in the mirror, this creature. It was like half human. He was like all green and had deep ruts in his face. And he opened his eyes, and he had no eyes. He had empty eye sockets and stared out at the mirror, and he said, I see you too. And we just stared at him. I see you too. And I, this is, Bill and I both went running out, and we found the exit. We went running out, and we ran across the park, and they were closing up. And we found our parents by this restaurant near the parking lot. And I said, Mom, Dad, they, there was this creature, this thing in the mirror. He wasn't standing in front of it. It was in the mirror. And my mom laughed, and she said, oh, Bob, you're always making up scary stories. You're always making up stories. So they wouldn't believe me. And Bill and I were really, we were shook, right? But we got home and said, all right, we're OK. It was just a scary. Obviously, they do these special effects in the Hall of Mirrors. It was fine. So a little later, I got changed into my pajamas and got ready for bed. And I went in the bathroom to brush my teeth. And there in the mirror was this green face with this eyeless guy staring out at me. And he said, I can still see you. <laughs> That's my true story. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, <laughs> I never. You think I made up part of that true story? Yes. Yeah. You think maybe I made up a lot of it? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm going to uh, got a little time before I sign your books. Um, the very first Goosebumps Horrorland book is called Revenge of the Living Dummy, and it stars my favorite Goosebumps villain, Slappy, the evil dummy, comes to life. And I've written four or five Slappy books. And this is the newest one. And in this one, he's called Mr. Wood at first. No one knows he's slappy. And I'm going to read you a chapter from this new book. And it's the, the book stars a girl named Brittany. And her weird cousin, Ethan, has come to visit. She doesn't like Ethan at all. And Ethan, is he's brought this big ventriloquist dummy with him. Mr. He calls him Mr. Bad Boy. Mr. Bad Boy. And he sits Mr. Bad Boy down with Brittany, and he's going to show her his comedy act. And this is a scene from Revenge of the Living Dummy. And Brittany is telling the story. Just, Don't laugh too hard, Ethan said. You'll hurt yourself. No problem, I said. If you need me to explain any of the jokes, just let me know, he said. I rolled my eyes. Just do your act, OK? Mr. Bad Boy grinned at me. His eyes opened wide. He had such an ugly smile. Totally evil. Brittany, is that your face, or did you forget to take out the garbage? The dummy said. His voice was a shrill rasp. Be nice, Ethan scolded the dummy. That's my cousin. The dummy leaned towards me. Brittany, 
Something just reminded me of the banana I had for breakfast. Oh yeah, your nose. The dummy tossed back its head and let out a long donkey laugh. I'm a bad boy. Is this your act? I asked Ethan. He shook his head. Sometimes Mr. Bad Boy doesn't cooperate. Yeah, right, I muttered. Be good, Ethan scolded the dummy. I like your long hair, Mr. Bad Boy said to me. Too bad it's all growing on your back. I burst out laughing. The joke was terrible, but Ethan was a really good ventriloquist. I couldn't see his lips move at all. Mr. Bad Boy, please, Ethan pleaded. Be nice to Brittany. The dummy's eyes stared into mine. I know we've just met, he said in his harsh, raspy voice, but I'm a very romantic dude, and I have three little words I'm dying to say to you. Three little words, I asked. Mr. Bad Boy nodded. Yeah, take a bath. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I laughed again. Is that your face, Mr. Bad Boy asked, or are you standing on your head? I groaned. Don't blame me for these jokes, Ethan said. Blame Mr. Bad Boy. I'm a bad boy, Mr. Bad Boy exclaimed. You're an awesome ventriloquist, I told Ethan. How did you learn to do that? Ethan set Mr. Bad Boy down on the bed and walked over to me. He shrugged. I don't know, just practice, I guess. I slapped Ethan a high five. Well, good work, dude. I really think you're talented. And then I gasped because across the room... Mr. Bad Boy turned his head to me and opened his mouth in an ugly laugh. How did you do that, I asked. Ethan's smile faded. I didn't do it. He took his hand out of his pocket and pointed to Mr. Bad Boy. He did. I frowned at him. Can't you ever be serious? I am serious, he insisted. I was trying to be nice to Ethan, but he always had to act like a jerk. I decided to give it one more try. You know, everyone in my school has to do one hour of public service, I said. That bites, Ethan said. Listen to me. I've got a good idea for you. I'm going to give a painting lesson at my great aunt's retirement home. Maybe you could come too and do a funny act with Mr. Bad Boy. Cool, Ethan replied. Yeah, thanks. Maybe I'll practice some new jokes. Over Ethan's shoulder, I saw the dummy raise its head again. It opened its mouth and let out a long burp. I laughed. That's pretty good, Ethan. Come on, for real. How do you do that? I'm telling the truth, Ethan said in a whisper. I didn't do it. He grabbed my arm. Please believe me, Brittany. Sometimes it's like he comes to life or something. I pulled my arm away. Yeah, right. And monkeys can fly to the moon. But then I saw the kid was trembling. On the other side of the bedroom, Mr. Bad Boy laughed again. I almost fell for it, but then I remembered all the dumb tricks Ethan played on me the last time he visited. He was a total trickster. He just loved to make me look dumb. No way I believe you, I said, so stop it. Give me a break. I'm trying hard to be your friend, Ethan. I want to make you feel at home here. Big whoop, the dummy chimed in from the bed. I grabbed Ethan by the shoulders. Tell me the truth. How are you doing that? His shoulders shook. I thought he might have tears in his eyes. I am telling the truth. This time, you've got to believe me, Brittany. Before I could answer, I saw the dummy raise its head. The mouth worked up and down. I could hear the click of the wooden lips. And then the dummy screamed, I'm alive! Don't you get it, Brittany? I'm alive! Ethan grabbed my arm and held on tight. Help me, please. I don't know what to do. And that's a chapter from Revenge of the Living Dummy. Thanks a lot. <laughs>